What is up? What up? Good I'm doing well. How are you? Does it sound better if I put headphones on? Or is this yes, okay? it will. You know I have a problem with people hearing me. So. <laughs> How's that? Oh, much better. Nice. So, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you this morning? Man, no complaints. That's awesome. Where are you and what time is it? Uh, I'm at home currently, um, watching my dog play in the yard, and it's uh, 7 a.m. Gotcha. So, um, just to uh, reiterate, you don't know any of the questions that I have. It's all fine, but I see my pants, right? This is literally a shock to me. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. All right, good. Uh, favorite color? Shit. Um, I would say orange. Name one thing you like to do for fun. Oh, this is going to sound so weird and old, but, like, since I bought my house, I have been gardening, like, all the time. Uh, shut and, up. Oh, my God. And I love to go to plant stores and just walk around and touch plants. You're literally that old lady. And and here's the deal. I don't want to buy the plants at the stores because they're a lot of money. So I look at them, and then I go around my neighborhood and see if they grow wild anywhere so I can dig them up. Yeah, that, my mom used to do that. She was a landscape, <laughs> uh, she was a landscape park culturist. And in the South, she could uh, like look through the swamps and find certain trees, dig them up, and sell them at retail. It's crazy. Oh, uh, at my, you know, maple trees and um, like red buds out here are a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars if you buy them. But I can go dig one up from an empty lot for free. <laughs> oh my god! Coming to Facebook Marketplace near you. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Hey. Um, so this is called eat, give away, or throw away, and the options are steak, pizza, burrito. Yeah, I would eat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, was that, was that the, how I it? <laughs> no, it's mandatory you have to eat one, give one away, and throw one away. Okay. I would eat the steak, I would give away the pizza, and I'd throw away the burrito. If I Perfect. had to. If I had to. <laughs> If I didn't have to, I'd eat all those motherfuckers. I, would, I, I, I just said, gun to your head, eat, give away, throw away. I'd and sit so on my couch crying and just be like, oh. <laughs> All right. So please give yourself an introduction. Uh, I'm Alicia Brandt. Um, I own currently Working Dog Radio. Uh, I'm, well, I'm a partner. I don't just, just own it. Um, I am a partner in Working Dog Radio. I'm a partner in Torchlight Canine. I am a partner in HRD Police Canine. And uh, we're currently working on another couple of really cool ventures. And then I also was the original owner of Working Dog Dry Goods. And I just sold that uh, about a, two years ago, almost now. But I still do all their painting, so... Uh, I think Ted is in the window flapping it against the window. He was, he was like, <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so thanks for coming on this Saturday morning with us. Um, thanks for I've having me. A really cool list of questions. We're going to jump all around from business to kettlebell swing challenges, all kind of cool stuff. So listen, um, I am just gonna lie my way through most of them. I'm not. Okay. That's it's gonna make shit up. Sounds like the majority of the canine world. <laughs> I'm gonna pencil whip my resume right here. Here we go. Um, all right. So let's start with uh, how many? What's the average hours on a muzzle that you spend? Um, it depends. I have uh, multiple stock designs that just through the years, you know, people have ordered over and over and over. So I decided that it was time to make just kind of a series of black muzzles with teeth. Um, that way the customer could get them a little bit faster. Um, they're still all hand done, um, but I, I have like a specific line of teeth that I do. So those take me about an hour a piece. My custom ones 
they can take me. Uh, it just depends. Uh, some people are like, you know, I would like um, the Sistine Chapter. <laughs> so, sometimes I'm like, holy shit, you know, this is like two inches by four inches. Like, um, so they can take me a couple days if I'm, I'll work on it, set it down, pick up another piece, work on it, set it down. So, and then you've got to dry it and cure it and seal it. And so. What dog on social media has displayed one of your muzzles that you are um, most happy about? Oh, man. That's crazy. Um, so to date, I've painted somewhere around 3,800 muzzles, maybe a little bit more. I think I, I stopped counting. I started keeping a list in 2016 is when I started actually keeping the list, but I had painted prior to that. Um, but since two, 2016, it shows around 3,700 muzzles. And wow. um, uh, uh, yeah, they've been on badass military dogs and groups. They've been on some of my favorite law enforcement dogs. Canine Chief uh, has my tiger muzzle that I love. Um, and he's also the smiliest boy. Um Dita, obviously, Dita, the hair missile uh, from SEAL Team. Um, I, I'm actually doing a muzzle for his second dog now, Pepper, uh, nice. that I'm excited about. So they're just out there. Prime Ammo. Um, I got to meet the owner of Prime Ammo not too long ago. We were talking about the muzzle I did for, for them. So a lot of cool ones out there. How does it make you feel whenever you get the picture sent into you of the dogs wearing them? Um. It, I always equate it to, like, like I'm not out there doing the cool high-speed shit, right? So, like, it's kind of like the person who sews Superman's cape. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Like, like, these guys are heroes, right? Like, these dogs are out there doing badass shit and bringing down people and finding drugs and, and search and rescue and, you know, all kinds of crazy shit. And, and they're, they're taking a piece of me with them when they do that stuff on the helicopter rides and on the – on the aerial deployments and, you know, through all this stuff. So it's, it's when I get pictures back of that, it's, it's like getting to see just like a little piece of me hanging out with them while they do high speed shit. It's really cool. That's badass. Uh, who's been your favorite working dog radio interview so far? Ah, damn dude. Um, and you guys have had some doozies on there, so oh, I know that's we've a hard had some ass bangers. Question. We've had some bangers, man. Um, it, it's it's so varied. I don't know, man. Like, um, man, that's tough. Making me try and pick. It's like trying to choose between children, and I. Don't have children. <laughs> I know you got to see all these people coming up at one of the conferences soon. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I, you know, I love the informational ones because it's kind of like our roots, right? Like the whole purpose that, that we started, um, working dog radio for was because this industry needed a voice that was like uncontrolled by the, the two people who owned magazines, right? There was only two channels that you could advertise or, or get your voice out in canine prior to working dog radio. And you had to, you had to align with them. You had to kiss their ass. And so it's like working dog radio, whether we like you or not, whether you like us or not, you, you're welcome to come on to working dog radio and talk. And, and so I love like the informational ones. Um, I love like having guys like Mike Suttle and Jerry Bradshaw and you know, all these greats that are in our industry. Um, and then we get these these crazy ones that are, you know, like super heart clenching. Um, you know, Jared telling the story of of Canine Harley um, in Canine Down. Um, Fritter, uh, Frank Ritter, telling yep. his story. Um, and then we've got these like super well known people that have been out there. Uh, we released Jimmy Hatch next week. I think next week, 23rd, um, Jimmy Hass will be out. We've got these, these authors, um, you know, uh, we just had Will Chesney on, um, 
who, who was in the Bin Laden raid, like just crazy shit that that we just we are super fortunate to to be able to be a part of. So can't choose just one. It's like it's like the eat, throw away, or give away. Like I I, I like all of them. I'll, I'll let you slide on that one. That, that's, a, that's a pretty tough question. <laughs> that's tough, man. There, um, there, there have been some really freaking – you know, one of my – one of the ones that I was really intrigued by the most – I can't really say the most, but, like, it was hard to turn off was um, the Mountain Dog Rescue. Yeah. Like, Avalanche dogs? Avalanche dogs. Holy shit. Right? That was cool. I – it's just it's people and dogs doing unimaginable things and and getting to hear it firsthand, you know, getting to hear it from their mouth. Um, I love reading the books and stuff like that, but you know, I have a tendency to just kind of like imagine, you know, being there, imagine being in that, and just to hear it from their voice and that firsthand experience is is really cool. That's awesome. And, Sometimes it's really hard to edit because I'm sitting there edit and I'm bawling and dogs passed away or, you know, and I'm just like, oh, oh how am I going to do this? You know, that's yeah. neat. Mike has said that was one of her favorites. Uh, canine kind of source said three fire Hi, emojis. So, uh, and I think I saw Paige jump on. Porky Woo! dog dry goods. Um, it's my homie. She, she hit me up on the side and was like, hey. Send me this picture so I can share it of the muzzle maven. And I was like, that's pretty badass. Like, <laughs> and then <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm stalking you on social media for our questions, I come across the Halloween costume from last year. And I'm like, you know what? All she needs is a big M on the front of it. And there, we got it. Her next costume. <laughs> That um, wasn't a costume, though. Oddly enough, that's just how I dress. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was some people, it was Ted's costume, and you wear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got I've got a weird, you know, weird superhero like thing that I do. Oh my god! I'm gonna try not to fall off the treadmill. Um, <laughs> let's see. So we'll jump around. Um, do you have a best HRD memory so far? You know, my favorite part of HRD, and um, and this always will be, I think, is watching the skepticism leave people's eyes, right? So, like, you get people who come, and obviously, you know, we're, we're a little bit controversial, um, we're all very outspoken. There's a lot of people who, who like us, who don't like us. Like we're like whiskey. We're not for everybody, but, um, you'll have this group of handlers that show up. Right. And normally there's like, you can see the division. You've got the guys who have heard about us, who know us, who follow us on social media. And we're the ones who like spearheaded it or, or were, you know, lobbying to get us in there to do what we do. And then you've got the group that were, that are super skeptical. What can these civilians show me? Like, what, you know, I, I'm going to have seen this training before. This is not going to be anything new. And on day one, you, you kind of see them go through the paces. Okay, this is kind of average. This is normal. Day two and three, you see that light click on. You see the skepticism leave. You see the guys will come up to us. Like, man, you know, I really didn't know about you being here. I really, yeah, I wasn't about this. And, and I'm so glad that you're here and can't wait to have you back. So I, I, that's my favorite part. Hell yeah. Um, favorite scenario that we, that y'all put on so far? <laughs> um, my favorite scenario will always be the brown hole, and I can't say why. Like, <laughs> I, I am, I, you know, it, it's, there's... There's so many surprise scenarios that we do that we're going to throw you for loops. Like, we're, we're going to keep you on your toes. You're never going to know what's coming at you. Even the guys who have been through our scenarios before, we're going to change it up so that you come in there like hot shit. Like, oh, I've got this. I've seen this before. You're not going to end. Your ass is going to get tackled. I can promise you. Someone said, brown hole is the best hole. Love that at the HRD. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, 
looking at uh, like junior handlers and trainers, what's one thing that you see across the board that they're missing? Training. You know, it's in the ideal world, you want to see these guys paired with their dog and put through 12 weeks at least, you know, of, of training with their dog. You want to see that they're paired properly, that they're ready to go to the street, that they're put through scenarios, that they know what their dog's indication looks like, that they know how to read their dog, that they know how to work their dog, and they don't. The, you know, department budgets and time constraints and, you know, all these things lead to these officers being, here's your dog, here's your leash, go out and do good shit. And... You know, some of them don't know the right end of the leash to hold, and it's not their fault. I think, okay, Michael Goosby said this best, and, and for those who don't know Michael Goosby. I, I know exactly what you're about to say, because I just saw it the other day. Go ahead and say it. I told him I'm going to steal it, and I am. Which I'm interviewing him Wednesday, by the way. Uh, we're getting him on the podcast soon, and whether he likes it or not, he has no choice. Um, but he said, you cannot expect Porsche performance if you train like a minivan and I was just like oh, like beautiful yeah. reference and you know we we critique these videos where we see failed deployments on live PD on um, you know whatever body cam we see a failed deployment and we're like oh fuck that dog fuck that handler they suck balls they're you know they're stupid and nobody thinks this guy didn't get enough training Nobody stops themselves and goes, you know, hey, come out to our training for free. And so, you know, that's that's kind of what HRD wants to do and wants to extend is, man, if you have a failed deployment, call us. Come have a spot. We'll give you a spot if you have a failed deployment. And we'll work through it. If you're close to Torchlight, come out to Torchlight and, and go through one of our free Tuesday night trainings, man. We're not going to charge you. We want to help you. We want to make sure that you're better and better prepared. Um same with Van S. Call Eric. Dude, that motherfucker, Eric will answer his phone at 3 a.m. Call him at 3 a.m. Tell him I see yep. you. I, you know, <laughs> but I mean, all of these guys, email Ray, call me, text me, call any of us, and we will figure it out for you. We'll help you. Yep. And, um, you know, that's, these guys need training. They need help. And, and most of all, man, stop being fucking dicks as far as, like, critiquing people, you know, like their 30-second video online when you see a failed deployment, don't be a fucking asshole. Help them. Yeah, um, that's, that's a so tough I one. I to ask if I can cuss, but... Uh, you, of course you can. Eric, <laughs> Eric said, please don't call him. <laughs> he was watching. That's great. Um, you know, it's, that's such a sticky situation because there's so many of us out there that want to help departments but on the flip side of that our hands are tied because they won't allow us because we're non-law enforcement so yep have you guys ran into that problem oh thousands and thousands and thousands of times um i'll, I'll never forget we were in um we were in missouri and it was we were brought there by a an indian tribe that we work with and I won't, I won't name them. The tribe is amazing. The guy who was running their training program is, is a good friend of ours, has done some really high-speed shit in the military. Once he got out of the military, he's a civilian. And so he brings us in to train his, his light foot, is what uh, uh, Indian tribal law enforcement called. So he brought us in to work with Lightfoot. We had sold him five dogs. And he had invited some neighboring departments. And we get there, and uh, Ted starts decoying for him and is doing, um, I think they were doing extraction scenarios, something easy. Dog would go in through the front uh, front window of the car. Ted would come out the back hatch with the dog attached, blah, blah, blah. And this guy was the head trainer of his department for a PD, a local PD out there. Ted goes in, works the dog. It's a female dog, older dog. She did great. And when she latched on and he, he picked her up and started, you know, putting a little pressure on her, her, she, she started to wind up, right? We all know what that sounds like when a dog goes from a regular bite to winding up and you can hear that, that, that noise that they start to make where they know that this is getting real. 
Yep. And she performs beautifully. Gets out of the car, works her a little bit, outs her, and, and they go on. The guy goes back to his guys and says, this is an insurance liability. We, we can't work with civilians. And, and they literally, the entire department, he made them leave. And, and it was just... And then, you know, went on to have just a completely closed training now. Um, and so we always tell Ted not to Joplin departments. <laughs> it's kind of the joke. But um, you, we've went through the paces. We've, we've earned our stripes. We've begged departments to work with us. Even our local department is one of a really, you know, fairly large department in the U.S., um, took several years to where they would work with us. And now they buy dogs from us. They come out and they train with us. They call us if they have any questions. They buy breaker bars from us. Um, but yeah, it takes convincing. You have to be, you have to be better. You have to prove that you're better and you have to stay with it. If they tell you no 10 times, ask them 11, yeah. offer them 12, you know, show up. <laughs> what are they going to do? You know what I mean? Like show up. And, and invite them, invite them, invite them, invite them, send them videos. This is me working this dog. This is me working this guy's dog. Like, don't give up um, because now we don't have any problems. If we call an apartment, we're like, hey, this is HRD, Working Dog Radio, Torchlight like K9. Um, we're going to host this training. We're going to host a decoy camp. It, it, it fills up because people know us by reputation now. And, and so don't, don't let civilians stop you. And people... People who say civilians can't work with us, you've never shut the fuck up. We yes. work with, with departments all the time. We make better dogs. We 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 put dogs out there that are having successful tracks, successful drug finds, successful apprehensions. The proof is in the numbers, the proof is in the in the dogs and what you what you put out. So guys, officers that are watching this, get yourself a civilian decoy. Get yourself somebody who wants to be in the suit, who loves to be bit by dogs, who wants to put your dog through paces. Don't get some guy who's like, oh, man, I, I don't know. Does it hurt to be bit? Is that is that going to feel, is that going to bruise me? Because, yes, it is. It sucks to be bit by dogs through the suit. It hurts like hell. Get yourself a badass civilian who wants to do nothing but get bit by your dog and make you a better person and a better team. Hell yeah. That just gave me goosebumps because, you know, that's, that's something that has been, um, it raised a little stink over the past two months about decoys being paid, this and that. And when it comes down to it, a lot of us, most of us do this to make the teams better. And it's not about being paid. I got a fucking job that pays my bills. Decoying doesn't pay my bills. If you expect to make, I, I think there's only one guy in, in the world right now that makes a living being a decoy, and that's Franco. Franco, Anthony. yeah. <laughs> and, saying, and, and, like, everybody knows Franco, and, and Franco knows Franco, and, and like, we love well, Franco. Uh, Franco just posted a picture yesterday of his 17th annual decoy class with one department. 17 yeah. years. Yeah. And Franco knows what he's doing. He's beautiful in a suit, you know. Um, but... Yeah, if you go out, you you buy a, a suit and you invest you invest your money. There like there's literally no way around that, right? A suit's going to cost you twelve to seventeen hundred dollars, and then obviously you're going to need a a cool paint job. Um, but like you're going to invest your money, but it's kind of like going to the gym, right? Like you're not getting paid to go to the gym. You're going to better yourself. You're going to to get healthy. Um, like it, I saw that that hubbub. It actually, the guy called me and screamed at me. It was pretty funny. But I saw that hubbub about you know, um, we need to be paid to decoy. No, the fuck you don't. You know, you you need to get introduced to departments. You need to make introductions, and you guys start working together and better better teams. Like, you need to get reps in. Because you're a decoy. That's what you're going to do. And if you don't want a decoy and you, and you, you don't want to put the time in, then don't. 
but don't don't expect to get paid for it. Um, HRD kind of we started something where decoys are going to get paid to do to do decoy seminars. Like we're going to certify decoys, and then those decoys are going to go out. Well, hold on before the certification ninjas get me. We're not going to certify them as like you're you're this professional decoy. They're going to come through our course and they're going to learn exactly how we do things. And then they're going to go out and train other people how to do those things. Um, so there is a way that our decoys are going to start making money in that. Um, but it's still not going to be a full-time gig. Like, you need to have something else to do. Um, we buy ours beer. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we buy dinner. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes the departments buy dinner. Sometimes they don't. Come out because you want to get bit. Come out because you love what you're doing. Come out because you um, come out because you want a better teams. Or don't come out. <clears throat> well, I when all that stuff went on, I made a comment that instead of me personally getting paid, I got to ride every day with Eric. And me picking his brain was more valuable than any couple hundred bucks you could have gave me for those three days. He's like, because dog the, Jesus. The information that I got from him, just the experience of being around him, picking his brain, but also the friendship that I got from earning his trust that I was capable of doing what I can do. Um, he's trying to get me to come to Canton to help with one of his schools. That awesome. was the connection that was made. So sometimes we have to look past the money. I get it that people want to get paid. But as I said, me personally, <clears throat> my business is paying me to be there. My business yep. is running itself. It's self-sustained from the connections that I made, the things that I've learned to better my business. So that way when I'm gone, they run smoothly and it allows and them to go and do that. So many of these guys do go on. They'll, they'll come through decoy camps. And, and I'm not just talking about us, but obviously I'm using us as an example. So many guys will come through us, meet a department, and the department will meet them. You know, and, and something that we do for our um, HRD thing, uh, you know, moving forward, we do background checks so the department knows that you're getting somebody in there who is who's good, who's got a clean background, who who's going to do your department right. And we make those introductions and then we leave the area and that decoy stays behind and then they can, you know, they can make their own connections and, and work with together. Um, I can't tell you how many thousands of miles Ted and I traveled for free. We, we went to PSA camps. We paid to go, we paid to get certified here and we, we begged and borrowed and, and, you know, we traveled across the country in this old beat up Subaru to work with whoever would work with us for several years for free. We paid our own meals. We paid our own way. We paid our own hotels. You know, that's, that's just part of it. So I, I just, I have very little sympathy for the, the few guys that are, you know, claiming that they need money to decoy. Yeah. Um, kind of taking a step back to the question I asked you about what you see from young trainers and handlers. What do you see or um, do you feel younger trainers or handlers can actually offer something to older handlers that you don't see from the older handlers? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I think they can learn from each other, right? Like, they both have to be willing to learn. And that's you know, if younger handlers come in and, and they're super, you know, super green and super pliable, and as long as they want to be in the industry, and you can, you can immediately tell, you can tell the guys who come into the industry who want to be canine, and you can tell the people who came in it for a position or a title or a next step to somewhere else immediately. And the guys who truly want to be in this, who truly want to learn and truly want to grow, um, and they're hungry, right? They're willing to make mistakes. They're willing to mess up. And they're willing to listen to the old guys, but they're also willing to do a new, you know, new school thoughts. So I think they both can learn from each other for sure. Give me an example of somebody you've come across that checks those boxes that you just mentioned that are, um, that are willing to keep learning 
that are always training, that even if they screw up, they learn from that and they move on, they don't harp on it. Um, do you have anybody that pops off at the top of your head? Oh man, there's so many, there's so many guys that we meet um, that then become lifelong friends, guys and girls, right? Not, not just guys, but yep. um, fuck man, that's hard. Um, she calls herself Tonto on social media, but Jesse Owens, she's, she's good. Um, she, she works a dog that's bigger than her. I literally, <laughs> can ride this dog. Like, she, she can ride this dog like a horse, like into battle. I, and sometimes I imagine that she does that. She's just like, you know, with a spear and she's just riding on the back of this horse. But like, <laughs> um, but that dude, she'll put on a decoy suit and she will fucking like, she will put your dog to work. Oh yeah. Um, but like there, there are, oh man, there's so many, I meet them every day. Um, guys who come through and then, you know, in one or two years are put in a, in a leadership position. Uh, it's so cool to see their growth. And so I, I couldn't probably just pick one. All right. I'll let that one slide too. Cause that one's hard. <laughs> Um, I'm taking a lot of liberty with your show, sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give you a good one that you can't slide away from. Who's Damn easier? To, who's easier to work with, Ted, Eric, or Papa Ray? Myself? <laughs> what? What's that? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm probably the most difficult. No, um, dude, they're, they're all great. I have... I've got the fortune to just be surrounded by really good business partners who are also really good friends. Um, I, I think we all have our little micro annoyances with each other, right? Like that happens in every relationship, business, personal, blah, blah, blah. But we're all really good friends. Um, I think Ray and I get along in the food aspect because he's an insane foodie like I am. So, like, him and I are always, like, digging for restaurants whenever we travel. Like, oh, this one has five stars on Yelp. And, uh, you know, so uh, <laughs> that's our jam. Um, you know, but, no, they're all difficult and easy to work with in their own ways. Who flosses better, you or Ted? What? Who flosses? Oh, I almost fell off the treadmill. <laughs> Uh, Ted practices more. So, for now, I'll say Ted. For now, got it. Um, <clears throat> tell me, I got really inspired by what you and Ted did the past uh, 30 days. Tell us about this kettlebell swing challenge. Oh, shit, man. How do I get myself <laughs> back into that? You know? And, like... and did Ted talk you into it, or did you talk him into it? He, he talked me into it and like, Sucker. I, I'm, I'm, I'm Rick and Morty. You son of a bitch. I'm in like, it's, you know, it's like this. Okay. This is probably going to hurt. It, it, sounds <laughs> like, it sounds like it might be a bad idea. Um, and I'm like, fuck it. Let's go. So it is, it's 10,000 kettlebell swings in technically 20 days. It's 30 days, but you take off a day every two days. So, um, it, it equals, 20 total days so it's 500 kettlebell swings a day for 20 days and um and it sucks uh it hurts the first like the first few days even trying to walk afterwards was like my house has stairs just to get to the front door and i i kind of contemplated like am i am i okay just sitting in the garage for a couple days like <laughs> You do, um, so it, you pick a weight that you can stick with. So I, I pick 25 pounds. Ted does, um, I think 35 or 45 pounds. Basically you do 10 swings and then you do a squat. Then you do 15 swings, two squats. Then you do 25 swings, three squats, and then you do 50 swings and then rest and repeat that five times. So by the end of each workout, it takes about three minutes, three and a half minutes to get from, to get all hundred in one set. So you do that five times and I mean, you're, you spent. So today is 10,000. We did 9,500 yesterday. Today's 10,000. And so you got to do them. You haven't done them yet. Nope. Not yet. Nice. 
Um, do you think that I saw Ted posted in, the, in our group, but is that something that will continue on the road just to, yep. you know, promote fitness, uh, cardio, healthy, you know, being the best you makes you that much better in a suit. Absolutely. Like we have, um, you know, Ted and I go to the gym at least five days a week. We try to do six, but at least five. I'm a you know, currently changed up my diet because I'm not, you know, the, I'm a, I'm a super healthy eater. I just eat too much. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, he is, he's very athletic, very, um, like cardiovascularly fit. I guess you could say he did cycling for a long time. So, you know, if you can't, if you don't have the stamina, I, in fact, we had a guy show up one time to one of our, um, HRDs and, he was smoking a cigarette before it got started. And I remember looking at some of the guys and I was like, I don't know how this guy's going to hang. And sure enough, he stopped. He, he didn't come back after day one. I mean, it's, it's tough. You're getting, yeah, Eric drinks a lot of monsters, a shitload of monsters. <laughs> and Ted carries, um, what is that in the pump? The energy drink. Um, Fuck, I don't know. He carries one of those with him where he'll just buy water and squirt that into the water. Wow. Like, y'all are going to have a heart attack, by the way. Stop doing that. Um, but, like, you know, this is something where you're you're running, you're hiding, you're underneath things, you're fighting a dog for an extended period of time. We've had dogs on bites for 10 minutes, 12 minutes yep. um, in some of these scenarios. So, yeah, if you're not fit, like, you're not going to cut it with us for sure. Best business advice you can give someone? Um, two things. One, all of the high-speed shit, all of the taking bites, all of the, you know, the dog training is fun. All of the fun things are not what pays your bills. If you do not know... Yeah, strike force, thank you. Um, if you do not know how to file your taxes, get a CPA. If you do not want to respond to emails and social media immediately, hire a social manager. If you um, don't know how to pay your bills, hire somebody. Hire somebody to write checks. Hire somebody. You have to know how to run the back of your house. You have to be organized. You have to know when your bills are due. You have to pay your vendors. Um, you know, I see businesses start every, every year and they're, they're making videos and they're shooting guns and they're getting dog bites and they're doing all this cool stuff. And then they, they disappear, they go away. And it's because they didn't know how to monetize their social media. They didn't know how to, to file their taxes and they get themselves in a lot of trouble that way. Um, so that's one. Make sure your back of the house is priority over the fun stuff. It sucks. Nobody likes to do office work. Nobody likes to do that, but do it and get good at it or hire someone who is. And the second is diversify. Don't just be a one trick pony. Um, especially in like this whole coronavirus thing. Um, I saw a lot of businesses that were just one dimensional struggle, right? diversify have have business here and know how to do this so that you if you can't if your business starts failing you have another skill set that you can do to make money in another area and capitalize off of it don't be afraid to um to have multiple things going multiple irons in the fire i think those are both amazing points um Along the way, what's been the worst business advice you've ever been given? Um, <laughs> I've been told, well, uh, you know, that a civilian can't make it in this industry. Um, and that um, I cuss too much and I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not feminine, like I'm not approachable enough, like on my social media. And don't Ooh, be afraid to tell somebody to go fuck themselves. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> exactly, Paige. Who, 
who's on the radar to be being put on uh, Working Dog Radio that you guys haven't? And maybe he's like on a dream list of someone that you want to interview. Man, you know, I'll be really honest with you. Um, every once in a while, I'll come up with a zinger, but the guys, Eric and Ted, are really the ones who are like, I want, I want this guy. I want this girl. I want, and then I'll help go out and headhunt them. And what I call tactical stalking. Um, so it's tough, man. We've had so many on there that would be like dream catches for us, you know. Um, Jimmy Hatch doesn't do many interviews, so having him on was pretty cool. Chesney, having to chase him down was pretty cool. Um, one of our buddies, um, you know, Trent, I want to get him on, but because he's been on a couple of like, oh, I'll tell you right now. Um, fuck, what is his name? He, he was the producer that did War Dogs. And he's an actor. Um, he's really good looking. That's all I got. Um, I can't remember his name. Fuck. Um, but like... Oh, shit. What is his name? The producer of War Dogs. Yeah. Hmm. Let, me, let me think about this. He was in the movie where the guys are Chippendales. Someone help me out here. You, you lost me at Chippendales. Oh, you know you watched it. A lot of people are saying Bart. That would be a good one. Yeah, Bart I, along would be a good I, one. We, we've kind of touched base with his camp a couple times. Um, uh, Ivan was a really good pull, too. Ivan? Yeah, Balabanov. Yeah, that was a good pull. Let him run. Like, you just ask him a question, and he was just like, whoop. He just filled Chan it up. Channing Tatum? Is that who it is? Channing Tatum! No, it's Magic Mike, not Chippendale. See, if you would have said Magic Mike, I would have pulled it right away. Well, you know, they dance like Chippendale. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't watch movies because I don't have the attention span. Like, it's really hard for me. I'm like, oh, shiny. And then I'm gone, and then, you know, shit doesn't get done. But, uh, <laughs> So, yes, Channing Tatum, because he, for some reason, he is very steeped in the um, the canine world. He loves war dogs, and he's done multiple things with with war dogs. He loves... I did not know that. Stories. So, yeah, it's kind of odd, and I'd like to... I just want to know why. Like, what what is his basis behind that? Right. So. <laughs> All right. So... I don't, this is going to piss a lot of people off before they even hear the whole question. But what, Wait, me? I'm going to piss people off? Wait, no, what? the question in itself before it even gets read <laughs> completely. But <clears throat> if you had to select just one person to basically be in charge of governing the canine world, canine industry... Oh, man. So if you had to pick one person, who would it be? Fuck. We should bring in an outside independent third party because all of us are assholes. Um, <laughs> um, fuck, man, that's tough. Um, I think, you know... Somebody like Gooseby, who I see, who has a shitload of experience and is also a very fair person, or, you know, I, like Howard. Um, Howard Young? Young. Um, because Howard is so diplomatic and has, like, he's a badass trainer. He's, a, like, super, super humble. He is super, super kind. And he also is used to working with children. And so he can manage us. <laughs> you just laid that in there perfectly. <laughs> Kaiser said there's there's no crying in canine, bro. <laughs> Fuck no. Well, there is a lot of crying in canine, but we'll make fun of you for it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
I'd vote for Howard for sure. Right? See, he's acting, he's him. watching, yeah. He knows. Um, Howard, you know. Let's see. Who do you think has attended a seminar that's probably the most knowledgeable, but also the most open-minded to it? I I have a I have somebody. I'll say after you say yours. And that's tough. Um, oh, Eric, are you answered it for me? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Nix would be amazing. When we were in um, Boston, and the name's going to escape me. The the head trainer for Boston PD. Um, Troy Casey, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jay Nix, Troy Casey, some of those guys where they show up to your training and you're just like, I hope I don't fuck this up, you know, and then they tell you it was good and that's kind of like, you know, you're super excited, yeah. There you go, Donnie from Cincinnati, yeah. Troy Casey, all, those guys, um, they you know immediately when you work with them whether you fucked it up or whether they like what you've presented right they they don't bullshit and i and i very much like that i appreciate people who are no nonsense with me because when you meet me you're going to know what i think of you pretty quickly um and i i like that same thing back from people so yeah any one of those three guys for sure yeah i mean with, with jay he was so ready to go through the scenarios as he watched them. He held off so all his junior guys can go, but at the very end, he wanted to get a, a piece of it. So you know it's working. Yep, and every one of them wants to be put through the ring ringer. They don't just stand back and let their guys do it and then yell if they did something wrong. Like, they do it themselves. They see where they messed up, you know, or, or where there's going to be failures or where they think their guys will have failures. They'll ask us to tweak things for guys. Yep. Um, so that that is that's a good leader right there for sure. What's been your fondest memory in K9 so far? Dude, every fucking one of them. I mean, this is our ninth year. Eight wow. Years, eight and a half, nine years now, nine years. Um, and it, it's just it's a forever changing, growing industry. Being. And, and I don't mean this to sound egotistical, but I really do feel like Working Dog Radio is the voice of the industry now. And being able to spearhead that and being able to um, meet so many and talk to so many people and put their messages out on the airwaves, to me, is, is so fucking cool. Like, I can't comprehend that sometimes. I'm fascinated by... Because when I used to fish professionally, I used to obtain sponsors by... I saw this! That's fucking badass! I'll go yeah. fishing with you, dude. Um, the way that we used to obtain sponsors was we would show our sponsors numbers. Like earlier you said, numbers don't lie. Nick and Joey always talk to me about numbers not lying. Um, but we use impressions. So if my boat was wrapped, traveling down the interstate five days a week, X amount of people times this number... That's the amount of pressions that I give off, um, and that's how I help the company. When it comes to Working Dog Radio, how does it work with that as far as obtaining sponsorships for Working Dog Radio? You mean like as far as us headhunting them or them approaching us? Like how – Like like I guess kind of both ways. Like do you have to prove to them how many downloads or how many this, that, and other? Or, you know, or I'm sure yeah. people are reaching out because – they know you guys are the voice of the industry and they want to be a part of it. I mean, I see the list growing because of not just because you guys are the cool kids. It's because the shit that y'all are putting out is amazing and the interviews are amazing and people want to be a part of that. So what does that look like on your end as far as obtaining those sponsors from the business side? First of all, like it, it was not easy because – we were not the voice of the industry when we started. Like this was like a, like a pipe dream, right? Like Ted, for a year prior to us even beginning to form Working Dog Radio, wow. Ted had 
had this he put this spreadsheet together and he's like he's like this is going to be crazy but i really want to start a podcast and i'm like yeah right honey that's a great thing um i don't think so um, no um he was like no i really think it would be a good idea like you know i i think that we could really change the industry and and of course we were friends with Eric um, through, you know, like when Canine Jethro had died and I had been up there. So we met Eric then and, and we had become friends with him. And Eric was talking at the same time about starting a podcast. He's like, you know, I think this is a really important thing that, that we, could, we could start a podcast. And so independently, both Eric and Ted told me that they wanted to. And I said, you know, I think you guys should talk to each other. Like, what about doing something where we do it all together? And, and I mean, it was immediately like, both of them were like, son of a bitch, I'm in. Like, there was just no, no question, right? Let's go in the garage and do karate. Like, I've got a fighting kimono. Let's do this. <laughs> and did we just become best friends? I think we did. Um, so they, like, we started, like, pitching ideas back and forth. And I went to five businesses. I went to five friends in the industry and I begged them, like begged them. I was like, listen, we're going to start a podcast and I need seed money to buy like, um, that, that is true. Ted had to audition for Eric because Eric, little known fact about Eric, by the way, strip club DJ. So he had the voice for radio. Now um, coming to the stage, Candy Bar. <laughs> um, so I begged five people to give us, I think, I, I think it was like $500 a piece so that we could buy our original equipment, mics, the software, all that. And I promised them, I said, if you invest just that much with me, one, I'm going to, I'll set your, your price at this for forever. Two, I promise you in one month, we'll have 10,000 downloads. And I was lying off of my ass at that point because I had no idea how to even get those, but I promised them. And on the 31st day, we had 9,998 downloads. And, and then people started paying attention and it hit the airwaves and we actually oddly enough were like number seven on the top 100 and um we've held our place and now we're closing in on almost three quarters of a million downloads wow and those are independent you know and, and so it's trackable and then we go out and we find um you know sponsors or sponsors now find us and then we work with them we we do social media with them and then they come back to us they want to sign back up they keep coming back and they tell us you know because of you guys did this or um you know libby with vet care uh, is is one of my favorites because she came to us and she just someone had given her my number to ask her about like how to run social media and I, I, I pitched her the idea of coming aboard on Working Dog Radio and just giving us a chance. And, um, you know, now she's, she's been one of our longtime sponsors. So, right. um, you know, it, it's both. I go out and I find people that I, that I like and that uh, we know their products and that they align with our mission. And then people find us. So it's not as hard. But it, it did not start that way at all. Has there been anybody that you've turned away because they don't align with you guys? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's been, there's been a ton of inquiries. Um, you know, there's a hard no with me. I will never work with Elite Canine. Fuck you. Fuck you, Jason Farron. I see you. Um, and that, you know, that was from the very beginning. Like, I made sure that that, that was a hard no for me. Um, oh, uh, yeah, we're trying to get some, uh, penis pill, you know, Eric, I think wants to do extends, <laughs> um, you know, Viagra, I don't know, Paul, if you're watching, hit us up, uh, um, strike force, 
Ted. Ted drinks seven gallons of Strike Force a month, bare minimum. Um, Coors Light, if you're listening. So, <laughs> Captain Morgan. <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, it, Tesla. Yeah, hey, Elon Musk is looking at moving to Tulsa, by the way. So, Perfect. hit us up. Tulsa's cool. That's awesome. That's so good. Um, real quick, because we've already crushed our time. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming on. It's been absolutely amazing uh, talking Dude, with you this morning. Thanks so um, much, man. And, and look, you are fucking awesome. I love getting to work with you. I've loved getting to know you. So I, I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. Um, give some parting words where people can find you, get a hold of you, get a hold of a, a muzzle, any working dog, dry good stuff they need. Give us all that information, please. Uh, 100%. So you can hit page up at working dog, dry goods, uh, working dog, dry goods.com. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. I think she's on Twitter. Um, she's got the fuck around and find out callers that have like went viral 50,000 times. Um, and I can take zero credit for that. That was all her brainchild. Um, or you can get my cool muzzles there. Um, you can visit us at working underscore dog underscore radio um, or working dog radio.com. We just put out some new t-shirts, safety third and um, catch bad guys, not Corona. Uh, so those are our new tees. We've got some badass merchandise but, on there. By the way, can, can I just set up an auto account so that way every time you release something, it automatically ships because every time Micah tags me 47 times and then I buy it. So <laughs> I just need an auto ship. Tops. Badass chick tank tops. Oh, I, um, I don't know if you know this, but I actually stole your wallet last time we were together at a decoy seminar. And so you don't even have to set up auto debit because I've already actually taken your wallet. Oh, nice. Okay. Micah, cool. call me. I got you, boo. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And by the way, she cannot wait to meet you. So can we hurry up and get together so she can meet you? Let's do that. When are you coming to a decoy camp? We, we get, we're we going to get there. So um, I'll bring her. I'm ready. For sure. Um, thank you so much for being on. Tell Ted I said what's up, and we will see you soon. We'll do it. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>